On this week's show, we're going to talk about Shane Byrne heckling me at the Irish Rugby Players Awards last week, and in a different incident, Dave Carney putting his, his fist up my bum. <sighs> that was rough. That was, that was fine. Rough it was fine. It was you had to be moment. there. It was fine. Which one? When you told me about it, you the physical abuse sad. or the verbal abuse? You looked sad. <laughs> we'll be talking to Jack Carty about uh, Game of Thrones and his predictions for this week. Uh, Robbo completed his task this week and referred to Barry as a ghosting gusket, so we'll get into that. Yeah, we'll give our Guinness Made of More Player of the Season, Try of the Season, Handy Try of the Season, Most Improved Player of the Season, was it? Uh, Something like that. Yeah. And they each get a pair of Paula Connell's teeth or a bosom. They both get nothing. Joe presents Baz and Andrew's House of Rugby, together with Guinness. Hello and you're very welcome to Baz and Andrew's House of Rugby here on Joe, together with Guinness. On today's show, all eyes on Celtic Park, Glasgow, as we look ahead to the Guinness Pro 14 final between Leinster and Glasgow Warriors. We'll also be chatting about the two semi-finals uh, with Glasgow giving Ulster a bit of a hiding and Leinster just having way too much for Munster. Uh, we tackle your Twitter questions and we chat Game of Thrones with our Game of Thrones correspondent and guru, Connacht and Ireland out half, Jack Carty. We'll also have some made of more end of season awards from Baz and Andrew. Uh, just on Carty, like obviously we're going to talk about, about it later on in depth. But um, let's whet our appetite now. Yeah, exactly. We haven't seen this week's episode of Game of Thrones. Have we not? <laughs> You've seen half of it. <laughs> you absolute asshole. Uh, you betrayed me. But I'm still going to just focus on last week and again just loosely try and stitch some sort of rugby uh -huh. uh, analogy with Game of Thrones. I haven't screamed at a TV. Like the way I screamed when Daenerys lost her shit and burned the city to the ground. Did you not see that coming though? I didn't really think she'd do it, did you? Yeah. When there was a pause and they made such a big thing about when the bells ring. Yeah. I was like, when the bells ring, Daenerys doesn't give a crap. <laughs> <laughs> it's going for it. The bells ring and they, or they took a while to get ringing. Yeah, and then they started they ringing did. and everybody's that like pause. looking at Daenerys and we knew exactly what was going to happen. Yeah, I still, like the gullible, innocent man inside yeah. me was like, nah. She wouldn't, she wouldn't. And it you, was like, you're still seeing the Daenerys from season one, yeah, falling in love with Carl Drogo. I was mad about her, yeah. Getting out every other weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still in love with that Daenerys. <laughs> She's changed. She's gone, she looks great. The hair like is kind of sticking out of bits and pieces now. <laughs> yeah. They used to be so perfect all the time. Yeah. That's how they've made her crazy. They just go, hey, give her, give her hair. Yeah, look, and the, 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 the makeup and all has changed and all, and her face expressions mm. and everything. But I haven't screamed. I think the last time I screamed at that was when, remember when, I don't know if you were playing back then, but when Ireland beat Scotland in the last day of the Six Nations and then all France had to do was not lose to England by 40 points or something like that in uh -huh. Twickenham. Do you remember that? Uh, yeah. Were you playing that day against Scotland? No, that was 2015. Was it? Yeah. And... Uh, that was whenever they, they received the, the trophy in their suits. Yes. And afterwards, yeah. And we were all watching the French England match going, okay, they're getting the bait in here, but they're they're ha still Rory and then, Cockett. Then yeah, when France yeah. just started running the ball from behind yeah. their own line. Yeah. And you were like, What the can't get out of <laughs> yeah. I became the most roaring racist on the planet. I was like, This is so French. <laughs> Typical French, they're so selfish. And I was like screaming at the TV and then that was the voice of reason in my head was like, Wait, Barry. This is the reason you love the French, remember? It's this kind of, this attitude. So surely you can't hate the French because of the one reason that made you love them. So I think the same thing happened with Daenerys. I was like, what are you doing? Yeah. Stop. But then I was like, wait, you love this about her. She is the mother of dragons. Like, this is what she's made to do. Like, burn the city to the ground. What's she going to be doing? Like a dragon? A a woman with a dragon, like, you can't be sound. <laughs> She's been sound so far. Yeah. Apart, there's been a few wee moments. Remember she uh, burned Sam, uh, Samuel Tarly's family? Yes. That was the beginning Ooh. of her turning bad. Yeah, and she gave Varys, like, that poor... I'm sorry for Varys. So did I. Tyrion, and Tyrion, to be fair, said, listen, 
It was me, man. Mm. Still. <laughs> still, you still did it. You still did it, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't mean it, go, it goes away, Terry. Yeah. And then he gave me a little squeeze in the air. But <laughs> That's right, yeah. A <laughs> reassuring <laughs> squeeze. A squeeze. And the very just looked at his arm like, what are you doing, man? Like, I'm about to get scorched <laughs> by a fucking dragon. <laughs> Can we squeeze in my uh, arm just before uh, scorching? <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, It was pathetic. And, uh, and I, I like the way he was like, fairies got in the... Um, I hope I'm wrong. Yeah. You know, that was pretty good final words, like. Yeah. And he was not wrong. No he way. was spot on. <coughs> McCarthy will be on to talk to us through what he thinks will happen, because obviously we don't really have a clue. Well, you do, because you've seen half of it, but we'll, we'll ignore that. Uh, rugby. <coughs> Leinster versus Munster. We'll start there. Uh, it kind of, yeah, mo- it, they got there in the end, I suppose. Leinster started a little bit. Let's talk about selection first. I thought that was interesting yeah. from Leinster's point of view. Delighted to see Ross Byrne play out half. I think ballsy move from Leo Cullen, but probably deserved. He's played a lot of games for Leinster in the Pro 14. Yeah, um, and I don't think uh, people oversimplify it. And people, there's a lot of headlines. There's a lot made of it, but at the same time, you've got you get um, you play Saracens the week before. Unbelievably intense game. Enter Pro. And then potentially, hopefully from their point of view, they were thinking, right, we're going to have three massive like test match intensity games mm-hmm. three weeks in a, row, in a row. It makes sense. Not mm. It's not just a burn is getting picked ahead of Sexton. It's definitely not that. That's no. not what you're thinking, is it? No, no. It's I far just from think it. It's just managing uh, workloads. Yeah, and I think it's it's a good message to send to your squad as well. Yeah, if, if you play well enough, we'll give you a chance. Yeah. yeah, and then you've got Johnny Sexton coming off the bench after 55 minutes, like... Rare in the go, wasn't yeah, he? He was up for it. First touch, I think it was when he made that break. Um, but yeah, I thought fair play. And Ross Byrne had a, had a really good game. He kicked so well. Um, he did four out of four, did he? Um, then they rest in Kearney, rest in O'Brien, rest in Fardy. Um, <clears throat> and then Josh van der Fleer, like, yeah. what uh, an introduction back into He's rugby. Class, like, isn't he? he was unbelievable. He's like 25 tackles, eight carries, yeah. four turnovers like he just I thought he he gave Leinster an edge that they have been missing I think in a in back row and, and line speed and defence yeah um, I thought he was phenomenal so he, he um, has a reputation now for someone who looks after himself really well mm-hmm. really well is really professional really diligent with his rehab and it's not a coincidence that someone with that reputation, someone who works hard, who's as conscientious about their performance as he is, they come back in and they don't miss a beat. Mm. They just go straight back in, performing well again. Mm. Um, back early as well. Like I don't think anyone was... He's early, oh, is that right? That back, back really? Back quick, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think Munster's selection, on the other hand, it's a little bit strange. Puts CJ Stander in uh, seven, which uh, didn't really work for me. Um, <coughs> and I think they were beaten on the ground. Um, that was a that was a tough decision. But that uh, is an area he's usually very good at. Yeah. Like getting over the ball is yeah, his true. a massive strength of his. So yeah. I can understand maybe a little bit. Mm, I think I'm, as I'm it, trying to give it benefit. Of doubt. And, I, and I'm trying not to be what we're critical of. Mm, hindsight. Oh, hindsight. No, this is Captain on. Hindsight all over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> absolutely. And even like I, I've spoke spoken to a few people about. Joey Carberry, Carberry starting, and again, hindsight is a great thing. I thought he had a good game, but he's played 10 minutes of rugby since uh, January, and I think everyone was expecting, God, we just get him back, and hmm. he'll answer all our questions, and yeah. uh, there's a lot of pressure on him to come in. And again, hindsight, with JJ Hanneran has been playing very, very well for months over the last month. He's definitely got his, his tail up, and he's got a little... Uh, kicking his step so again similar to what Leinster did if you start JJ playing for 50 minutes and and uh, then you bring on Joey uh, could have been a, could have been a better option for Maybe. Munster but I think Munster probably thought like the way they've performed the last few weeks um, you know, it hasn't they haven't been it hasn't been the Munster that we've been used to seeing him, even earlier in the season mm. and they probably just thought we need a spark we need it if you're going to play if you're going to beat Leinster in, in the, at the RDS you kind of have to roll the dice a little bit, make a few changes. And I think at least they got a shot away. If they did, if they, as you say, if they didn't play Joey and they didn't change things up in the back row, then they would go, right, you know, chances are Leinster are probably going to be better than us. But if we take a risk, roll the dice with a couple of selections, a couple of changes, 
then who knows what might happen. We might get a spark out of, out of Carberry. We might get something, discover something in, in a new back row combination. You know, yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to... No, I, I agree. I think when I went into the game, I was like, okay, interesting what they're doing yeah. here. Uh, and, and I like them trying something. Um, Sweetenham has been playing pretty well for me. And Mike Haley, although he had a good game on Saturday, hasn't done a <coughs> huge amount uh, creatively. So... I was thinking maybe they could have played Conway full back. Conway's well able to play there. He doesn't get his hands on the ball as often on the wing. Either does Earlsy, like they're not getting him the ball. Yeah. Whereas Haley gets the ball probably 10 to 15 times a game because uh, a lot of teams kick to him. So I was thinking potentially they'd play Conway full back uh, with Sweetenham on a wing. But again, look, hindsight. And do you know what? Munster played very well in the first half. Yeah. Um, they, they created a lot of opportunities. They just lacked, again, that little killer punch at the end to, to score but um, they controlled it out of the game discipline let them down at times and I thought Leinster got out of the block slow which is what Munster were hoping for mm. they they did look a little bit sore from last week and, and uh, Munster looked on top but as the game went on Leinster were like okay we're coming back into this, yeah. took a lot of energy from Van der Fleer I thought and Yeah, Munster, or, or Leinster, as Leinster kind of grew into the game they became <coughs> it's like they learned a few lessons from, from last weekend against Saracens, especially defensively. I thought defensively they were brilliant. Weren't they? Yeah. It just, and I actually thought Glasgow started defending like mm. the way Saracens were defending. Mm. It's like everybody just goes, whoa, that, it's like the five minute mile, everybody and goes, wow, we can actually get to that level. Mm. And they just increase their intensity. Leinster looked like they kind of had the same stranglehold on the game towards the end mm. that Saracens had over them last weekend. Mm, I saw, yeah, exactly. I saw like Van der Fleer, Fardy, James Ryan coming around the corner in defence and timing mm. their run, ramping to, up into it to mer like hitting yeah. the hitting the ground and hitting the line, sprinting almost yeah. as opposed to starting from a three point start. It was yeah, like the jog around the corner, see Murray's hands on the ball, and then they were gone, and. Leinster's defence has actually been quite poor for the last few months. Looking back and they're like since they played Glasgow that time, they played Ulster in the quarter final, uh, Treviso, uh, Saracens even, they've been struggling to get off the line, I felt. And that yeah. was one of the Yeah, it was know, like the the way they were defending earlier in the season. Yeah, just they were getting shoulder, back to the way they were. Yeah, shoulders out and, and making a few reads, taking a few risks with your yeah. defence. I think um whenever you uh, are kind of make a defence like make your I suppose your mentality in defence kind of too academic, you know, just to number up, make sure you get everything correct and then there's no spaces. It becomes too tidy and then you just soak, soak, soak. I think that's what Leinster were like last weekend. Mm -hmm. But whenever you start defending, again, making just uh, good decisions, but taking um, risks that are appropriate. Mm -hmm. I suppose making a, uh, making a read to shoot up and then just knowing that someone's going to uh, kind of cover you. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's, it just looks a little bit more untidy, but it's way more effective. Mm -hmm. I think Absolutely. you just back each other up a little bit more. Yeah, I think they got their space in right. Like as you hear the commentator saying that uh, there was just a blue wall all the time, and they still had the back the backfield covered as well. Yeah. Um, James Lowe, Ragan boys. Yeah, yeah. Defensively, he's <laughs> yeah. big. He put in a big, uh, uh, a big shift, and obviously that try at the, in the last couple of minutes was. Yeah. Pure James Lowe esque. Did um did Conroy and Lowe fall out? And then Lowe then went Okay and he and he took off and who did he hit? Who was Stan it? CJ. It was CJ. CJ took him down. Him. Yeah. And then it was like he got up and looked at Conway and he was like, You see? <laughs> <laughs> and then they had a little moment at the final whistle when they were walking past and, and, and they shook hands and uh, James Lowe shook hands with Conway and then looked at the next player after him, but he definitely said something to Conway as he as he looked oh, beyond right. him because Conway did a double take and then was kind of like nah, 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 said something back oh, to no. him. And I was like, oh, I'd love to know what's going yeah. on there. Uh, he, he he gets he pisses people off, doesn't he, James Lowe? He does, yeah. Um, there was the, the, was it the intercept that he um, he was involved in a scuffle earlier on. It wasn't the intercept that he he put down. No. It, slap it wasn't that it was a yeah. scuffle before that and uh, it's the same what it's the big white mouth guard <laughs> <Grim>. <laughs> yeah it's a big grin like, right in your face and uh, if if you're trying to take that that scuffle seriously yeah, yeah. and he's not taking it seriously yeah, 
<laughs> it's really annoying. Like, Stop yeah. laughing. Uh, he was. Tr- he, I was hoping he'd throw out a few high fives at the end because we haven't really spoke about that in, in no, a long time. Someone did tweet me and say he's still struggling. He was. I think we. <laughs> I don't know if we've created that doubt in his mind. <laughs> I hope so. When he was when he was there at the end, there was people coming around and he's like, I don't know what to do here. And <laughs> his hands are just kind of. <laughs> slowly lifting and then not and he didn't throw any he's like shaking hands with people <laughs> yeah. to celebrate yeah. like some dignitaries congratulations like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, other than that the crucial Leinster try I think was uh, what a difference a week <coughs> makes when they didn't throw the pass last week mm. uh, and this week they they threw a few passes for that try it was absolutely brilliant and for it to finish with Healy Furlong Cronin yeah. um, was gas but that was vintage Leinster wasn't it on that occasion, you could you could excuse Gary for not passing on that occasion because it was Kane Healy <laughs> yeah, outside yeah, him, yeah. and he had to pull it way back to him. Yeah. And one of those ones, if you pull it back, then you kind of lose any of the advantage you're going to get with the overlap. Mm. But it's almost like he's just must have heard this all week. Yeah, throw the pass. <laughs> yeah, whatever regardless. you do. Yeah. Yeah. Kian, your problem. <laughs> <laughs> you can get that explained. Put it on. Yeah. 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 Uh, look, it was a brilliant finish, and. Uh, Kind of, I think was that Cronin's thirteenth try of the season. Yeah, some gas. He made another break as well. He made uh, a break off that we um, when they hit the midfield and then they sweep back and then he comes underneath. Yeah, that he's been doing that. Leinster been doing that for a while, have they not? That's quite mm. a common play. I think South Africa used to do that. Okay, my big fella Joan Smith mm. used to just, <laughs> just run that line. Yeah, mm. yeah, off Pinar back inside. Uh, apparently, Robbo Mark Hobson got in a few. Oh, yeah. Do you know what he said? Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, because I couldn't watch it on a uh, on down here. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I was watching the different air sports. So I was watching them on um, Premier Sport, but yeah. there were kids everywhere. I couldn't really hear much. He and I heard there was some mention of a of a rhinoceros with scissors. Hippopotamus. Was that hippopotamus? Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. What a legend. So he did that again. It was just a wee nod to you. He's in love with you, by the way. Is he? Yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, he referred to you as the ghosting gusket. <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> Which to me is not offensive enough. That's it's, it's too complimentary. Uh, yeah, it's not offensive at all. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, yeah. we the, the ghosting gosh, The remit was to it. offend you. Yeah, no, nah. no. Nah. Me and Robbo yeah. like that. He loves you, you know. Yeah. And he was going. I was on the phone to him this morning on the train the way down. And he goes, um, he was a great player, great player. Just kept getting injured at the wrong time. I was like, shut up, would you, Robert? <laughs> Just slag him off. <laughs> <laughs> so he got no slagging. Uh, no, he didn't oh, slag at all. Man, but he, what he did say was, you like this. Oh, no. Go on. Okay. I know it's just a really hard word to pronounce. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought it was a compliment. <laughs> we were getting a rash from them to say it. Um, okay, so then he went on to talk, he said, the ghosting gusket, and he said, Barry's now marooned in the quasi-perspicacious Middle Earth of Lampoonery. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard the like of it? No. Perspicacious, I had a look, I think, is that, I think that's the correct pronunciation. Yeah. Um, I think that means when you've got a little bit of insight, and then Lampoonery, obviously, like, abusing boys left, yeah. right and centre. Yeah, you bring that, definitely. <laughs> Um, You're per- perspicacious, I'm... Yeah. Lamp- Lampoonie, yeah. Lampoonski. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's my... Say that to me again. Oh, Barry. Okay, just talk. got through it last time. Yeah. Barry is now marooned in the quasi-perspicacious Middle Earth of Lampoonery. Love it. That's Thank brilliant, you. isn't it? It's because like, there's only a handful of videos of me doing stuff on rug- in rugby online of me scoring tries or whatever, and it's always Rabble who is commentating over it, so I've yeah. grown... Having watched them back the odd time, <laughs> <laughs> I've grown to love his voice more because yeah. he, he's so complimentary when he does yeah. it. As opposed to like, do you know your man Grant Nesbitt, is it? The Kiwi, the right. famous Kiwi commentator. Right. Who, <clears throat> I grew up listening to him, like, you know his voice, he's that I'm sure real not, Kiwi not. guy. And he's been doing it since I was a kid and I always dreamed I'd love someday for him to say my name doing something. <laughs> and then I knew he was doing the commentary for the Munster All Blacks game in 2008 in oh, yeah. Park. So I was like, here's my chance. So I'll get, and then I scored the try. I was like, oh, he's definitely going to have to say my name. <laughs> so I remember going home and watching it the next day and fast forward to listen to that part. And he goes, it's a try for Munster scored by, pause, <laughs> where he clearly has to look down. <laughs> oh. And he goes, 
Barry Murphy? <laughs> <laughs> a definite question mark after it. I was like, ah, oh, shit. I thought for a second he was going to say, for Gary Murphy. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's you know, um, Robbo's actually not that well liked down in Monster Direction. Why? I don't know. I think it's the, it's the Ogara. Well, sorry. Maybe he's not liked down Monster Direction, or maybe Ogara doesn't like him. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> I think it might Same be. thing. So Ogara used to call him BBC Humphreys. Oh, right. <laughs> he felt like he always like <laughs> talked up uh, oh, David please. Humphreys back in the day. He probably did. Yeah, it's a natural. We all did. This. We yeah, <laughs> only, only messing around. BBC Humphreys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, thank you for that, Robbo. We'll, yes, good we'll, man, Robbo. Great yeah, work. We'll continue to give you a few. They, there's hippopotamus with scissors. I'd love to know who he was referring to with that as well. Um, he also called uh, James Lowe gorilla glute, gorilla glutes. Fair enough. That's brilliant. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I don't know who the Hippopotamus was. Uh, but he's got the summer off, Rob. We'll take the summer off take and we'll see you next off. season. Yeah, we'll come up with more. A uh, mo little bit on Monster, I suppose, the end of their season. Uh, ultimately, disappointing one. Another couple of semi finals, and they did look, Peter Manny looked quite dejected again after the game. Obviously, a lot changing there. <coughs> um, coaching wise, is going to be, there's a few names been thrown around. Uh, Stephen Larkham, uh, former Aussie coach, is one of them. Uh, which would be very interesting. It's yeah. supposed to be really technical. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. It's to be a bit of a freak, like would have ten or twelve options off every, you know, line out or scrum that yeah. in the different positions in the in the field. Um but yeah, it's uh, it's more of the same for Munster, wasn't it really? Yeah. Is there any more shot of uh, Rob Piley? <clears throat> I haven't heard anything since last week, but I think there was an interview done or so I heard, so yeah. Um, but there's gonna have, they'll have to add three or four, right? Yeah, it's tough, tough for them because it just it feels like last last few years, every like monster supporters have been saying, you know, what do we need to do to get to the next level? What do we need? And then it's just been semi-finals, finals, which is better than when <laughs> where Ulster are currently. Mm. But at the same time, you know, it feels like um, they've been there for a while, and then the losing Felix, losing Fla, Dougie Howlett, chat of him going as well. It'd be mm. difficult to. To, for next year not to be seen as another transition whenever they really need to be moving forward. So Yeah, it's interesting because like as you said, <coughs> they're they're in a better position uh on paper than Ulster and Connacht are. But who do you think is happier at the end of the season, Ulster, Connacht fans or Monster fans, which is yeah. it's an interesting one and um And Ulster Ulster have had the season like no one expected Ulster to have as good a season mm. as they've had. Mm. So as you're right, it's just the it's what you kind of expect, but mm. Monster, I suppose they're a victim of their own success because they had so much success in Europe for so long that now then Monster supporters maybe are looking back thinking the good old days, it'd mm. be nice to get back there. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's just, I suppose, that, that ability to play a little bit more of an expansive game. Um, and that's where they struggled again the weekend. They worked their holes off, like, you know, they, they, they'll outwork any team. They've, Defensively, they've uh, they put in massive shifts every week, and they're creating opportunities. But it's that last option or that little bit of killer instinct, and like do you know that backdoor pass that we talk about a lot, where a ten goes out the back, and we've and and teams go wise. Like Glasgow did it so well at the weekend against Ulster. Munster didn't use that play once until JJ Henry came on in the last ten minutes of the game. You know, which yeah. is it's just bizarre that they that kind of. Um, they've chosen chosen to play that way, um, so for that reason, I don't think there's a huge amount that needs to change. You know, they could do with a few more signings. Maybe they could do with a James Lowe that can finish like that, um, and then obviously a, a whole new philosophy on 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 going forward and, and creating those opportunities. Which, as you've seen with Dan McFarland, is not rocket science. Yeah, you know, it's it's doable. So. And we, I think we've been saying that for the same, you know, we started this season, that's the way we were talking, and, and same with the last few seasons, so. Whoever it is that they get in, then it'd be nice for the, from, from Monster's perspective, for them to get someone in at the start of pre-season. Obviously, they're going to lose their internationals, they're going to be in, in Dublin most of the pre-season, but it'd be nice to get someone in there to create a stamp early on and kind of set a tone. Otherwise, you end up doing all your learning in important games at the start of the season. Mm. So... Yeah, tough, tough. But look, they'll regroup, and uh, also will Ulster 
Uh, did you work at that game? On? No. No? No. Um, yeah, it was a disappointing finish, obviously. Yeah. Good game. I enjoyed it as a neutral, I suppose. Yeah. Um, serious performance from Glasgow. They're class. Yeah, Glasgow, absolutely. I think Leinster will have their hands full next weekend. Mm. Glasgow were going unbelievably well. Um, they just look... Just look very comfortable in what they're doing with uh, with ball in hand. Um, uh, Hastings is just um, he? yeah, he's just running everything. He just looks so composed, and he's putting um, Johnson in space. Um, uh, your man, the thirteen, the South African fella, mm -hmm. and then Hog, Same. Hog and Seymour. They they're just they seem to be just loving the style of rugby they're playing. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's their backline, but their forwards are getting. Getting gain lines, getting dominance up front yeah, as well. They, so they have a brutish pack, like one of the best yeah. set piece and, and malls in the competition, and they'll always have that option and the pack to get real down and dirty and and uh, get a bit of grunt. But then they don't always take that option. More often than not, they don't. They'll go out the back to, to Hastings. Yeah. And like I said, he was Ulster or Glasgow were throwing that pass nine times out of ten yeah. to going out the back. But what I, I love about Hastings is his ability to to stay deep and know when to go flat, know when it's quick ball, that you get a little bit flatter. And it's something that we, we don't really uh, highlight a, a lot. Is the, that, that's what gives him that much time and space when you say that he looks so composed. He has time on the ball. Because yeah. he's not, if he sees a team coming flying, he's not going to be up flat, and, and especially if they've got time to set themselves and get off the line. He just takes, cools the Jets, takes another few yards off the line. and yeah. They were pretty easily getting the ball from one side of the pitch to the next. And then when he did take it flat, he's dinking them over the top, yeah. or um, he's got an inside an inside option. It's, it's quite Owen Farrell-esque, I think. Yeah. The way he plays. Mm -hmm. And then there was the Aleta try towards the end, actually. I don't know who it was, kind of shot up ahead. And then he just he just waits, waits for you to get out of position, mm -hmm. and then just feeds that pass in behind. And he's pumping a lot, isn't he? But yeah. he's moving the ball in he's two busy. hands, and, and, yeah. it, and it sits down the fences all the time. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I thought, like, Ulster's selection for that game actually was a little bit unusual. I know Balakoon had pulled out. Yeah. Um, but I thought they'd been going so well with Balakoon, Lowry, um, Stockdale, or even Rob Little. And yeah. uh, Ludish not having played in two or three months, I thought it was a bit risky putting him in there. And yeah. um, may not have had his best game, so I thought that was, that was a strange decision there. Yeah, I suppose the young fellas have all been going well. Uh, Louis is a guy, maybe similar to, to Josh, who like, really looks after himself and can, mm. can come straight back in, typically. Mm. Um, and he's, he, he, he kind of knows his game plan. He, he looks after himself. He, he'll be, he would have been physically ready, definitely. Yeah. Um, as you say, the young fellas were getting a nice bit of momentum. Yeah, I mean, like, don't get me wrong, it was 50-22, it, it, wasn't, yeah, it yeah. wasn't that. I just, yeah, as I, as I thought, I I know Balakoon was pulled out, but big fan of Rob Little as well, and I just feel like they could have done with a little bit more of that dynamism that he has. Big bit of X factor. Yeah, um, but yeah, not taking much away from Glasgow. That I thought that the tries they scored, especially in the uh, in the second half, like the Staines try from the the chip and gather and, yeah. and finish, and then oh, was George nice. Horn's chip for Peter Horn was just yeah. unbelievable. That was class. Again, like you. I know they were winning quite well, and they didn't, you know, they, they but that's the way they play all season. Is kind of they'll throw caution to the wind, and the ex, you expect them because they've got one of the best malls in the competition to just keep it up the jumper and maul them over the line, which yeah. they probably would be still capable of. But he just pulls out little dink. Yeah, the two brothers linking up. Yeah, um, and the young fella with the confidence to execute that as well. Mm. Yeah, which one's the nine? George. George. Or? Yeah. 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 Well, he's he's a youngster, isn't he? He's the younger brother, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how young he you is. I mean, like these guys just they come in. I suppose when you come in, when you're a young fellow and you come into an environment like that, I think Leinster have experienced this. Then young guys, they just kind of thrive, or they just more is expected of them, so they deliver more, hmm. or they kind of they just they just learn so much from the guys around them. So, hmm. um, yeah, he, that was class. Mm. Yeah, it was a uh, very strong. I mean, Lowry, I thought finished very well. It was a delight for him to get that try in the end. Um, to top off his, his his good season and getting dragged over by Kavy, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was great to see K. I mean, he equaled your record. Yeah, he did. Yeah. How many games is that? Uh, two two nine. Two hundred and twenty nine games. Yeah. Holy shit! Uh, um, but I got that back in the day <laughs> when it was harder. <laughs> it was harder. <laughs> <laughs> People say that. <laughs> uh, are you sickened or how do you feel? No, no. Delighted for him. Absolutely delighted because yeah. I think. 
just I'm, delighted he didn't beat you. I am just yeah, just delighted it ended there. Yeah. 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 He um <laughs> That's that rattling. <laughs> back of the yeah, we haven't heard from Pat yet. How are you, Pat? Grand, grand. Good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought. Uh, yeah, it was, the, it was a shame not to give uh, Kavi and Rory a bit more of a send off. Yeah. But I think they've had a, they've. I mean, they've had a few send offs. Had a few send offs <laughs> already. Yeah. For, from from Kavi's point of view, you know, it's it's nice to get that that milestone and be kind of. Yeah. He um he's always been very committed. He's always been he's been a one club man, and he's he's done it time and time again. And he's I think he's happy to move on and just um he's very smart. He can kick on to something else, different type of career. But it's nice for him to be kind of recognised up there, mm, absolutely um, up there for the best. <laughs> <laughs> and then Rory, obviously, Rory's send off is coming at the World Cup. Yeah. Did they did they have a big night out? On Saturday night, did I, you? I don't know. You they chartered it back, so it would have been in Belfast. I don't know. They must have gone all day Saturday, though, would they? I'd say so. Yeah. I thought so. a big going away party for the two of them, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry, they're going to Spain this weekend, actually. The whole team? Spain. Or New York. Uh, it is Spain. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think the players have organised a couple of days away. Unreal. Yeah. Did you ever do that? Go away together as a group? Uh, I think it was KV organised it. Maybe, might have been last year or the year before. Mm. Whenever, whenever, the, like, <laughs> Ulster season sometimes ends earlier than you'd hope, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you can have a couple of weeks where you train a bit, and then you get away, have a couple of nights out, and then you kind of finish the season. But um, yeah, that's it's a nice wee way to to finish off, get the boys together, and have a bit of crack mm. for the holidays because everybody goes their different directions. Yeah, I don't think we ever had any holidays. It was always just have a few days together. At the yeah, end. I think Saracens went for three days in Newcastle last week. At the end, they stayed in Newcastle. Oh really? Yeah. Um, Andy Good or Alex Good in his oh, yeah. uh, in his rugby gear was absolutely yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Um, and the bum bag. <laughs> yeah. I'll get behind a bum bag. You love a bum bag as well, don't you? A bum bag, man. Yeah, they're class. Um, <clears throat> I think that'd be a good Halloween costume, wouldn't it? Just dress up as Alex Good. Speaking Sarah's of Halloween and... costumes, um, uh, Dermot, our, our sound sound guy, yeah. we were up doing a, a promotion for Subway in Belfast last week. And uh, we were asking Dermot about his, his dreadlocks and he's got tattoos and piercings and stuff and we're asking about, about his dreadlocks, how do you get that hair? And then we had already had that conversation and then these um, these kids arrived and this wee girl, she was 10, Mad or Meadow her name was, real character, real funny, real outspoken, chatting, slagging everyone. And then um, she goes, what, oh, how did you get your dreadlocks? And then he goes, oh, you have to do this, you have to mad it and then you have to back comb it. And he says, do you ever back comb your hair? And she goes, only at Halloween, mate. <laughs> <laughs> he was gutted. He was gutted. He, do, he doesn't usually get out uh, out smart, does he? He's usually yeah, he's sharp. He's yeah, sharp. not this day. Well, Meadow got him. Yeah, ten year old. That was a great name. Yeah. Uh, just a last mode on, note on on Ulster. As you said, you'd be happy enough with how their season went from where like when they got that hiding down in, in Munster at the start of the season. It was looking pretty bleak for them, and I know they were missing a lot of players that night. But to finish the way they did, um, yeah, I think um, I think you can see the impact McFarland's had mm. all season. They've got better and better, and they've got. I was going to say they've got consistently better. I think they have, but mm. there's been blips along the way. Yeah, when things just haven't gone their way. Glasgow, yeah, three yeah. four weeks ago, and then Glasgow just there. But I think that's probably a reflection of Glasgow. I think also have shown that they can get. Um, up to the level that they performed at for that mm. quarter final against Leinster, again didn't go their way, but hopefully the progress is sustainable, mm. and I'll continue in the next season. Yeah. Uh, anyone for the World Cup squad? You'd be, I think McCluskey. Any is, bolters? Yeah, I think McCluskey's definitely put his hand up. Yeah. Really brilliant for the weekend. But he's been brilliant though for ages. Yeah. He hasn't got any more brilliant. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah. And and the one area, well, back row and centre are the two areas where being brilliant <laughs> might not just be enough. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it is. Yeah. Because he is he's probably Ulster's most important player. Yeah. Um often. He's the guy that gets gain lines, but yeah, be nice to see him get a go. Be nice yeah. to see one of the young wingers get a go or maybe Mike Laurie. Not in the World Cup though. No? No. What why not? Ah, I just think the competition's too high there at the moment. What with all the monster wingers? <laughs> 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 I think uh, you'll have to take Conway, you'll have to take uh, Earlsey, you'll have to take Stockdale. Um, even Adam Byrne I'd bolt ahead of ahead of uh, Lowry at the moment, but look, definitely one for the future. Dave Carney went well. Did actually, yeah. Yeah. I think he's I think he's really underrated actually. Mm. 
to do. I think he's really skilled, really good footwork, really nice balance. James Lowe, is he Irish qualified yet? Next November, mm. 12 months. Yeah. John Klein is, is qualified a few days before the World Cup, actually. Like three days before the World Cup. Thought it'd be a big game again the weekend. He's a brute. Um, anyway, we'll move on. Um, we will be right back with some Guinness Pro 14 final chat, uh, your Twitter questions, and we get our uh, prophetic Jack Carty on the phone for our Game of Thrones chat. But before that, uh, this Wednesday, I don't know if you know this, but we have a live <laughs> house of rugby from Liberty Hall in Dublin where we have uh, guests such as Dan Levy, Fergus McFadden, and many, many more. Um, <laughs> are you excited? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the many, I'm excited with the many, 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 many more. more. Uh, One more, probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, well, there's lo- going to be loads of people there. And <laughs> you can get your tickets and your pints of Guinness. Uh, the tickets will be, f- uh, we'll put up a link later on, on the, on the website, uh, and we'll tweet about it. But we'd love to see you all there for a bit of crap. <coughs> uh, our end of season party, basically, isn't it? Yeah, yeah the yeah. Belfast show was off the chart yeah so let's yeah try and get our intensity levels up yeah similar to the Saracens defence yeah banter (laughs) (laughs) well I'll have seen the last episode of Game of Thrones so I'm hopefully to mostly talk about that okay welcome back Uh, this Saturday at Celtic Park Guinness Pro 14 season comes to an end and yeah the league's two best sides come face to face Leinster and Glasgow um We'll do some awards in a few minutes for end of season, but yeah, let's have a quick chat about this. Would you say Sexton will start, maybe? Yeah, yeah, Johnny got back in there, I would have thought. Um, Yeah, more than likely will. Uh, It was uh, was nice, there was a big reaction from Johnny Mm. when he came off the bench, like he was up for it. Mm. He was fired up. I think whenever he's at his best, he's at his competitive best, and that's probably, that was a nice he managed, I suppose, by Leo, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. To get the best out of him. As you say, Ross Byrne not taking anything away from him. He was very good. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, Van der Fleer, obviously, he's going to stay in there with the seven jersey more than likely. Maybe yeah. Sean O'Brien on the bench. So Sean O'Brien, he's not injured, is it? He's, he, no, I think they were just resting him. <coughs> um, he's put in a big uh, big effort over the last few months, I suppose. Um, but yeah, it's not going to be easy. Glasgow, they were, as we said, they were, they were unbelievable the weekend. Um, pretty lethal back three as well as Hastings um, at out half. Um, Ali Price actually was brilliant as well yeah. the weekend. He's dangerous. Um, he shot through the rock a few times. You see that went after Cooney. Did he? Yeah. 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 It looked like it was like, kind of well planned. Also, we were being quite proactive and just clearing past to make quick ball. Mm. And I think if Cooney had spotted it, he might have just left the ball and then he would have got taken out. Might have got milked the penalty. Mm. But Ali Price did that two or three times. Came yeah. After him. I think what defensively they got a lot of stuff right. You know, Billy Burns isn't much of a threat as an attacking 10 in terms of having a go himself. He's very much a, kind of a passing 10, isn't he? So they f- I felt like they just kind of left him alone. They came up blanketed on the outside and uh, cut off options outside him, um, which is, you know, they just got, got it pretty pretty right. Yeah. Um, obviously, obviously Leinster will offer something a lot different, a little bit more variety, they'll go proper I think you might have, one thing, that, one thing that Billy Burns does really well is that short kicking game. Mm. If, he, if they had brought that in a little bit, they might have kept that defence a little bit more honest. Mm. Um, then guys were getting kind of hit behind the game line a bit. But. Yeah. Uh, Dev Toner, unfortunately, looks like his season is probably over. Yeah. Um, I was glad to see him walk off because when he went down, I was like, Oh man, when he was going down, he looked like the red keep falling. <laughs> 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 tumbling no. I was going this could be any body part yeah that's got hurt <laughs> yeah, here yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't even look at it yeah um, it looked bad didn't it yeah and I pr- so obviously Scott Faraday comes in who was phenomenal when he came in and James Ryan of course was unreal um, so what way do you think how do, how do Leinster lose that game or how do they win it um, I think um, if they can kind of stop that Glasgow momentum when Glasgow get their tails up a couple of times against Ulster, it looked like they were going to score eventually. Mm. Once they get a couple of quick phases, then you're just chasing your tail and you never get that momentum-changing uh, defensive play. So I suppose maybe stopping those early phases could be or stopping them at source, maybe going after their um, their set piece mm-hmm. could be the way to beat them. 
Listen, what do we know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be good crack. Uh, I'd love to go to that Celtic Park. Actually, did, did, uh, did Is Leo, it near Celtic Leo, Park? Did Leo Cullen get in a bit of trouble? <laughs> for, uh, all, everyone in Glasgow is... Or no, all the Glasgow Warriors players are Rangers fans or something like that, so we yeah, want all yeah. the Celtic fans yeah. to... Yeah. yeah. It was like... No. <laughs> <laughs> Got abort! Abort! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd say he meant no harm, but he's getting pulled for it anyway, of course. Oh, sure people are getting pulled for saying anything they nowadays. Grow, they are. Uh, right, will we get Carty on the phone? Uh, yeah. Or do you want to do our awards first? Give out your, give out your end of season awards. Okay. No. We've taught so much about <laughs> these awards. Our Guinness Made of More. Uh, instead of doing the Player of the Weekend, we're going to do our Guinness Made of More uh, Player of the Season, Pro mm -hmm. 14 Player of the Season. Mm -hmm. Um, who do you think Sean Cronin Sean Cronin yeah it's hard to look anywhere else isn't it yeah uh, these Irish players obviously 13 tries played a lot of rugby in the Pro 14 this year and he deserves it absolutely class Fine. not only scoring handy tries scoring unbelievable tries yeah mm. handy and unbelievable tries mm -hmm. <laughs> there should be a category for handy and unbelievable <laughs> tries <laughs> <laughs> Uh, breakthrough success. Can I make one suggestion? Yeah. My glory. Yeah. Done. Okay. Yeah. As you can tell, we've thought long and hard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it was either him or Will Addison. We we miss Will. Let's, we haven't brought up Will in a while, actually. No, I know. You remember I Will? Will? Remember I think Will? Will, um, my glory is the new Will Addison. Is he? Yeah. Uh, Will just got injured at a crucial stage. Mm. Otherwise, he'd have been potentially going home. He will be that. devastated not to get this award, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <he laughs> Final Will. will. <laughs> uh, so Mike Lowry you're our breakthrough success yeah we had we had talked about Boyle at Connacht and we did um, Penny, it's got Penny or something like that but uh, yeah once we said Lowry we were settled on it and mm. then he you came in yeah, you stuck his name out there you said Lowry before yeah yeah me oh, and Pat were talking about it yeah. good good um, he's played a lot of rugby hasn't he yeah and, and to kind of to come in under pressure and at the start of the season against Lens, uh, Leicester in <coughs> those games as well I thought you know, from dropping the ball early on in yeah. one of those games to, to finishing the way he did at the weekend with a great try. Yeah. Well done. Try of the season, we actually already gave this one to Jack Carty. I felt like Jack kind of awarded this to himself a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he? Did he? Do you remember he said... Um, he talked himself up He said, bit, yeah, yeah, it was pretty unbelievable. Uh, yeah, and he goes, yeah. no, no, I mean the build-up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll pull him on that again. Um, so that was Jack Carty's try against Cardiff, wasn't it? Uh, best opposition player from the other 10 teams outside of Ireland. Do you ever watch anybody else play? No. No, me neither. Hastings. Hastings. Let <laughs> 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 me see. Uh, some of the Benetton players. That Mata guy as well, the Edinburgh. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Vakayara for oh, yeah. Benetton Tr Treviso. Treviso yeah. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I used to have an email address that was Javiera, which is something I used to tell my mother when I wanted to tell her to fuck off, but I couldn't say fuck off. I used to say Javiera. Javiera, ma. Yeah, <laughs> so that's the only reason I remember his name. <laughs> so I just think my old email address. Uh, that's some pointless information for you. So we get but Jack, now, Jack we get phone, Jack yeah. Carty on the phone and we'll hear what he thinks is going to happen in Game of Thrones. Hopefully he hasn't seen it. The lion thing with the guy in the chicken suit. So we should tell that before the show starts, maybe on, on Wednesday or something like. Set the tone. Yeah. Oh, you've reached a voice message. Oh. You know, Jack Carty. I'm sorry. Hey, that's don't leave a message. No, we'll ring him again. Uh, okay. Mike Madison. Ah! 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 I was only able to hear um, two minutes of your voice message last week, so I had to go. Um, uh, I had to go and listen to it. I wasn't able to listen to it the whole time over the phone. <laughs> Is Trimby recovered from the roast and he got on there yeah. during the week off? Shane Bird? We haven't talked about this. I, I wanted to talk about this. Oh, sorry. So this is this um, uh, the the Rugby Players Ireland Award. So they mm -hmm. received their award at the front, and then they came into a, like a green room. And they put Jack and Shane Byrne together. Jack got Supporters Player of the Year and Shane Byrne got the... Uh, Charitable. Com community something, mm. yeah. Anyway, he came in and... Uh, and community something. Yeah, like, 
it, it kind of it got it, it was a wee bit um, stuttered and it kind of was a wee bit. It took a while to get going, and then whenever it did get going, he got a bit of momentum. He started abusing me. <laughs> <laughs> Over what? Uh, it was one of the most uncomfortable situations I've ever been in. I really? It was Jesus. I felt bad for you, Trumpy, to be fair. It was. It, it was. Oh, it was weird, Jack. Like, no, it was. It was. It was. It was even the people obviously who were there in the crowd, like who were just put in there for the for the actual TV part of it. Like, even they were getting a bit yeah. uncomfortable over their all. Yeah, I, I thought it was a bit unjust now, to be fair. He goes, um, he said, um, unjust. you're, uh, this is brilliant. Mm. Yeah, Beef. He said, um, uh, well, we were talking about the Legends game, weren't we? And, and then, I can't remember, I can't yeah. remember how it came up. And he said, uh, yeah, the Legends is all you got because your career is way, way in the rearview mirror. <laughs> like, long gone. You've got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and he said you had no, friend. no friends as yeah, well. Yeah, and then he said you didn't even get invited to Cooney's house party because you got no friends. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, uh, like, I didn't oh, know. I, I just thought I was kind. Of, I just like awkwardly cry smiled, you know, like a cry smile. And then just weird, weird, I I just did like a cry smile, like an uncomfortable smile. But you knew it was like totally not what I was feeling on the inside. Were you upset? Uh, were you rattled? Uh, you I was rattled. Going? I was rattled. I didn't know what to do, but I was happy enough that I was like, if I just get through this, then none of this is going to go out. Yeah. <laughs> so what can you do? <laughs> it was weird. Well, I was. I felt bad. I did, it was. It was very weird. It was. It went, on, went past the point of being funny, but you, you dealt with it well. Yeah. I don't he, know he, doesn't really he, have, he doesn't really have much room to be slagging people does he oh you know we'll get him on the show on wednesday <laughs> will we? what, like, with, what with having a mullet yeah just just generally like yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was weird though jack because at the start um he the reason we he got the award is because he's an ambassador for goal um fighting blindness temple street the legends uh charity rfu charitable trust and then uh we were like oh you sound like an absolute sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> and the opposite was true. Um, he was like Daenerys. We all but, thought Daenerys was good, and then she yes. burnt Trimby to the ground. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Daenerys, like, that's who. That's who. That's who. Shane Byrne is Daenerys. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> <Ugh. laughs> <laughs> ruined Daenerys for me. Um, what was your take on last week's episode? Jack, I thought it was unbelievable. Uh, Trinity here wasn't gone on this. It was, it was. She, she, she lost the plot really, didn't she? Mm. It was she, great. Her head, her head fully went. Um, I, did, I, I didn't see it happening to that extent. And then obviously, um, Jamie and Cersei as well. It was, um, geez, it was, uh, it was a bit of carnage. I couldn't, I, I couldn't get over her just burning all the innocent people. Though I was like, Jesus. I kind of. But they did, did it say like, she has done it since season one. She has like, like butchered people along the way so yeah um, when she didn't she crucify all them uh, masters in Astapor or something like that she crucified all them yeah so Samuel, she has been kind of she has been showing uh, some of it along uh, the way but I actually was very surprised about it just you know when she was kind of looking up at Cersei in the in the um, in the sept and then she just flew over and burnt all the innocent people it was a bit mad wasn't it mm, I I was just so happy that the dragon didn't get killed because I was just worried that the dragon was going to get shot at the start. And then when the moment yeah. happened, when they were both armies were opposite each other and there was just silence, and next thing the the wall behind them got blown open and the dragon came through. Oh yeah, that was unbelievable. That was part as well. And then obviously I was. So you were happy. You were happy with. You were happy with how it went. Anyways, now some people have given out. I thought it was. I thought it was good. Like I, they kind of have to wrap it up. Another might have left it a bit late. But. I kind of got into the fact oh, that good. she was burning everyone. I was like, go on, yeah. burn them. <laughs> Even the little girls and all. Yeah, the women, children, men. I was like, as long as the horse, the horse survived. I was delighted that the horse survived at the end. I was like, the horse is an innocent bystander. He's just getting dragged her, into this. Her, she, surely she's, I haven't seen the episode now, but you, you, you can't really see her. I don't know if Arya will get to her or John will do something. But so what, yeah, what's your prediction? Like, you can't see her surviving. Do you think John or Arya? It's got to be one of them, right? Yeah. I don't know which way ever Arya went with that white horse. Unless she went towards, um, towards King's Landing more, or did she head off? But uh, you can't, I don't think she, I don't know if she'll survive or not. Have you, you haven't seen it, have you? 
Yeah, I've seen it, Jack. He's not allowed to talk about Have it. You? Though. Yeah, we're not, we're not allowed to talk about it. Yeah. Do you want to hear my prediction? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jack, what no, did you I'd think say, of? I don't know. I say she does. What did you think of Braun's monologue after um, uh, he stabs uh, Jamie? Braun. Or oh, Braun. you're on. You're on. You're on. Sorry. Yeah, you're on. You're on. Uh, he's, yeah, he's pretty funny, wasn't he? It was weird. It was pretty I, funny, for sure. Yeah, I chatted to a couple of people there, a couple of the guys on the uh, the North of Wait, is that what it's called? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and they, they thought that was really cheap. They thought that was real, kind of not really in the spirit of Game of Thrones. What they but, say, like, I was with your bird? Yeah, yeah like, no, it's, no. It's of, like, you, you kind of <laughs> read all the theories favorite. every week that you think, what they think is going to happen, and then nothing really happens. Like, there was people saying that Tyrion was going to fly a... Uh, Fly a dragon. dragon. I was about to say elephant there, but no, he's gonna fly a dragon. But <laughs> none of them things kind of really happen at all, did they? Yeah, I couldn't see Tyrion on the dragon. Be weird. Maybe a wee mini. Yeah, I wonder wee what mini dragon. I wonder what he'll make. <laughs> I wonder what he'll make now that oh, Daenerys gone, gone mad. He could kill her himself, and Sansa could end up uh, could. ruling, couldn't they? Sorry, they could. Sure, they are married. Yeah. They are married. I don't know, it's going to work. I'm going to be trying to say and you're going to bomb home and watch it straight away. Yeah, so, me too. I saw a few spoilers last week, of last week's episode, so... Um, did you? I'm just not going to look on Twitter, yeah. What, what did you think, though, uh, Jack, of um, the the way Jamie and Cersei died? I mean, was that not... Yeah, I wasn't a fan of that. I was I was thinking that maybe... Um, I was thinking Arya was going to get to Cersei with like, Jamie's face, like, take Jamie's face and then kill her. Well, so it was kind of a, that was a cheap enough ending as well, wasn't it? It's just like mm. getting killed by rocks. <laughs> yeah. Cersei kind of limped out, Thinking. like really. She was poor enough, like. But but the, but they shoot them with the with the arrows, <laughs> and they're like the arrows are burnt to crisp. I, I enjoyed the, the bit. Is, yeah. You know. <laughs> I enjoyed whenever um, the the hind and Gregor, Sir Gregor, the game ball, the game yeah. ball. Yeah. I enjoyed when, they, when those two came together. And then, uh, sir, and then your man, the wee priest, was like, "Obey your queen." <laughs> and then he just gets swept aside. And then oh, she and goes, he got absolutely crushed. He got completely marked, as uh, Shanners would say. Then the um, Cersei <laughs> just goes, "Don't mind me," and she just like tittles off because she doesn't want to get caught in yeah. between Shanners, these two. Shanners wasn't Shanners wasn't happy when I was chatting to McCoonies. He was like, was, "He was sick and rational. I wasn't happy. I was didn't know my stuff." Oh really? yeah. He would have been uh, he would have been happy to have got um, replaced by you, but I think he was disappointed getting replaced by your voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to, to be fair, that was I was actually having kind of Maryland and I, I had the text off past. I had like literally completely forgotten. I was like, oh, Jesus, hope the lads. Did it. But then I saw the voice message. I thought, I'm getting to get absolutely rinsed. We did all right, though, didn't we? Yeah, no, you actually went up. Didn't was too bad. So you did well. Um, took it easy enough for me to be fair and uh, are you finished up now or have you another few days left <laughs> um, so there's a couple of us finished up today um, uh, but we're going to train on for the rest of the week and then we're kind of on holidays and then obviously depending on um, whatever sort of squad is named um, I think that's named next week or the week after I think so we'll have a kind of fair indication of um if we're in or out, I think basically I think it's to the Connacht lads maybe have five six weeks off, which is pretty good. Um, and I think if you get selected for the that extended squad, you might have like three and a half weeks or so. So there's a bit of a difference there. Um, so all the Connacht lads, the rest of the lads are getting massively boosted this week. Um, and a few of us then are just kind of on maintenance and doing a bit of weights. So it's not the worst. Cool. And are you around next week to talk to us? More importantly, <laughs> uh, next what what day? Oh, I'm going to Italy next week. I may not be. Oh, oh. I'm in Italy next week. You're in Italy. Uh, unless, you can, unless you're around Sunday. You do Sunday. Son, Sunday's difficult for me because uh, it's uh, Chris Henry's testimonial. Oh, um, it's oh like well. In uh, Malone, unless you want to do that show on the road. <laughs> in Belfast. <laughs> were you, uh, you were late this morning, I heard? Yes, yeah. Was, was he giving me a hard time, was he? Uh, I just heard you were a bit late. You were obviously up early watching it last night, were really. you? Yeah, really late last night. Mm. Yeah, the trimby was he was blaming the train, but we actually reckon he was in Connolly Station just watching the end watching of the Game of Thrones. <laughs> I haven't even seen it. I, I didn't even see the last fifteen minutes because it was 
So oh, Rogers, yeah. No. Uh, I think it's already wrapped up, oh. though. I don't think there's anything significant going to yeah. happen. I'm, gonna, I'm interested to see how it goes now. So yeah. Yeah. Well, Fingers crossed it'll be a good one. You don't want to plant no whimper, do you? Yeah. Well, we've, we've just made an announcement, actually, before we got you on, that you're, we to re-emphasise your try <coughs> against Cardiff was uh, awarded Baz and Andrew's try of the season. Congratulations. Oh, unreal. Good stuff. Yeah. Thank you very much. And Trimby, uh, Trim- still, still, still no award for it, though. Oh yeah, what was the award? No, no, there's not. No, you're right, Jack. There's nothing. There's, we have nothing material for you. Yeah. Um, I nah, suppose look, it's, it's, it's all about the honor. It's all about the honor getting it off you, Jack. So. Yeah, no, no, it's a um, massive honor. I'll take it. There's a lot of disappointed try scorers out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, um, well, we'll leave you back to the beach, weights. Get yourself uh, looking well for the holidays, and then we will. Maybe we could get you on the phone from Italy next week, just while you're panned out on the beach. See what your oh, thoughts yeah. were. I'll have hopefully a spritzer or an Aperol or something in my hand to give me a ring. Lovely. Nice one, Jack. Look All right, man. Look up, Enjoy Look the show. Look after when you're on holidays, oh, lad, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy. Good luck. Good, Good man, luck. Jack. See ya. Yeah, Did you have any questions? No. Pensed during a game. I don't think I was ever pensed. What does that mean? Get your pants pulled down? Yeah. Did you ever? Uh, yeah. Did you ever get pensed to the front? No, just at the back. I got back pants by Dave Carney and then he, he tried to um, put his hand up. <laughs> your bum? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Are you alright? Um, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think I've... I've never seen many being pantsed front, front ways. I have seen many dicks. It's easier to hide though, isn't it? Like you can't bend backwards and hide your arse. Depends. Depends if it's easy to <laughs> uh, Right, thanks everybody for your comments, questions, for listening on all your favourite apps and for those of you watching us on YouTube. Remember to keep an eye out for the live show later this week uh, on Wednesday in Liberty Hall. Uh, it'll drop into all your favourite apps on Wednesday night, Thursday morning. Uh, and to everyone joining us on Wednesday night, it should be absolutely brilliant crack. Oh, it's, got, it's going to be off the chain on Wednesday night. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cannot wait. Uh, ginormous thank you to everyone that was involved in making the show this week. Shane, Fiona, Anthony and Pat. This has been Baz and Andrew's House of Rugby here on Joe Together with Kenneth. Party on. Party on. <laughs>